you think about spiritual warfare, you have to go back to the beginning. With Adam and Eve, they were in complete relationship with God. But in that, sin came in. Adam and Eve decided to disobey God and took the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That was the beginning of our relationship with God and then the brokenness of that relationship. Welcome everyone to podcast number 115, Renew Your Mind. With us today, we have Senior Pastor Paul Gruenberg. We have retired pastor, Barry Sweet. And we do not have our youth and family director, Jeremy Teru, this week, so we'll miss him. Um, but uh, he'll, he'll be with us in later episodes. And myself, Dana Hall, as the moderator. And our last podcast, we ended with talking about the different types of grace or the types of grace through the Holy Spirit. And at one point we talked about um, dips and valleys in our walk, uh, in our walk with Christ. It and, was that sanctifying grace, the becoming like Christ. And yes. Yep. Dip and... So after after we talked about justifying grace when we're born again in a sense or what was what was Jeremy's uh justifying justice if I'd never sinned. Justice right. if I never sinned. And then we talked about sanctifying grace and that's where we talked about the dips and the valleys and um and what we wanted to talk about I think I asked a question about you know how do you get through the the dips and things of that nature, but you said, oh, you know, wait, we're going to talk about spiritual warfare. That's down the path. So here we are, we're at that topic where we want to talk about spiritual warfare. And um, I'm not sure I cued it up very well, but um, especially, and just a reminder, this is coming out on the day of Halloween too. So we, that's kind of ironic. Um, but what exactly is spiritual warfare? And I'll throw it out to either one of you? Well, I think that uh, when you think about spiritual warfare, you have to go back to the beginning. Um, With Adam and Eve, they were in complete relationship with God. Uh, It talks about God walking with them in the cool of the garden, cool cool of the morning, cool of the garden, and having that relationship together. And at that point in time, the physical and the spiritual, God is spirit, but God obviously manifested himself. Maybe it was actually Christ walking, a pre-incarnate Christ walking with Adam and Eve. But in that, um, sin came in. Adam and Eve decided to uh, disobey God and took the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Their eyes were opened, and then God closed the Garden of Eden to them, and then they experienced curse. They had received only blessings from God prior to that, but now there was curse. That was the beginning of our relationship with God and then the brokenness of that relationship. But you have to even go back a little further. Uh, You have to talk about the heavenly realms and also what occurred between uh, God and what we consider to be one of his chief angels, Lucifer, Mm -hmm. the most beautiful of angels. And in that, um, when we go back to that, Barry, why don't you pick up from there? Well, you know, Lucifer, I think one of the most beautiful of angels got so self-focused and wasn't there Mm -hmm. any longer to lead worship or to worship God. Um, He began to focus inward and he wanted to become God and take the place of God. And that's a result of that P word, pride? Pride, absolutely. And um, so eventually there was war in heaven where a number of Angels sided with Lucifer, and a number, of course, sided with God. And Do you have that exact number? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a third. A third of the angels okay. were cast down. Yeah. All right, I'll go with that. Um, so about a third of the angels were cast out of heaven you know, with Lucifer and to the earth. Um, and there was this great division, 
and separation um, in the heavenly realm. And that's really where spiritual warfare began. Right. And then it is the representation of, or Satan himself, the serpent in the Garden of Eden, Mm -hmm. who then tempts Eve and Adam to take from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, uh, which God had commanded them to not eat from. Mm -hmm. And there was a purpose for that. So the temptation came, uh, Adam and Eve fell into temptation or fell into sin, what we call sin, uh, disobedience to God. And as a result, um, they were removed from the Garden of Eden, God's perfect place for humanity. And um, maybe we could call it heaven on earth, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And in that, they were cast out and and then the spiritual warfare then becomes uh, humanity's, um, the spiritual warfare then really comes in between whether humans or humanity is going to worship God, be in relationship with God, or not. That's one way to look at it. Or you can look at it as being in relationship with God or being in relationship with Satan or the world over and against being in relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Can I uh, go back to the the heavenly realm? Sure. Um, Where the a third of the angels were cast out. What period of time was that? That was pre creation of the earth. So well, well, not I I think they were cast down. They were cast down to the earth. So So it was created. That's a great question because. (laughs) Because, I mean, when you look at it from that angle, what day of creation, you know, I mean, if you go with days or eons or mm-hmm. periods, whatever, um, of creation, um, that this rebellion in heaven took place. Mm-hmm. And, but if they were cast down to the earth, the earth already had to be in existence. Right. So that would have to be night and day. If we go back in our Bibles, let's look real quick. Genesis 1. No, that, fourth or fifth day. Yeah. Somewhere in creation. Yeah. That's all I was looking for. Yeah. I wasn't looking for exact. So. Right. Okay. But that was pre-Adam, mm-hmm. I think is the most important piece. So spiritual warfare has been with us a very long time. Mm-hmm. Since the beginning. Since the beginning. Yeah. So that gives us a timeline and then... If I if I ask the question, what exactly is it? What is spiritual warfare? What are your first responses? It's the, I guess, internal comes to mind first, although it's spiritual. It's that warfare that keeps us from God. It's the, there's an inward desire that we all have for God. Mm-hmm. But it mm-hmm. is looking for God in all the wrong places. And the spiritual, the warfare comes in as Satan, for lack of better words, assists us to move away from God. Mm-hmm. Whereas our truly deep um, desire is to be in relationship with our creator. And so it's that, it's, that warf- it's that warfare that happens. It's the tussle inside our hearts and minds to live life on our own terms, our own means versus uh, submitting ourselves and being in relationship to God and submitting ourselves to God's way. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus' words, thy will be done, is the ultimate goal for our lives is to follow God's will for it. Because if if God's will is a, a, a perfect life, Mm -hmm. being in perfect relationship Mm -hmm. with God, then Satan's will is that we either minimally do not have a relationship with God at all or maximum, maximally, maximally have a terrible relationship with God. That would be Satan's role. That's where that warfare is, is that, that internal struggle with God to be, I'm sorry, not with God, but to be in relationship with God, to mm-hmm. grow into that closer relationship with God. Going back to the uh, sanctifying grace, the Holy Spirit's role is to help us to become 
like Jesus, right. mm -hmm. to become holy and righteous. And Satan's desire is that we remain either unholy and unrighteous or feel so uh, immersed in sin and so guilt-ridden over sin that we never move closer to God. I wonder mm. if there isn't another piece to that is, you know, that whole usage of the word in Scripture about being lukewarm mm -hmm. and, um, you know, either be hot or cold, don't be lukewarm. Right. I think Satan— um, goes after a lot of us and just tries to make us lukewarm so we really don't care one way or the other. Right. We're mm -hmm. kind of in this middle place where we're comfortable, where life is pretty easy, and um, we don't really strive anymore to be faithful or holy. Yeah. Um, and that's a really dangerous place spiritually. Mm -hmm. uh, probably one of the more dangerous places we can be. Yeah, very acceptable. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're accepting of anything. And, yeah, don't have uh, to work real right. hard. So I think that's one of his goals, and and that's a piece of spiritual warfare is to make us lukewarm. Um, you know, rather than hot for the Lord and, and going after our faith and, and stretching and growing and mm -hmm. trying to go deeper, is that we're just kind of bumping along, you know, and getting through life as best we can, and um. We're not really working on our relationship. We're not opposed to a relationship, but it's no big deal. Right. Mm -hmm. or, I also, oh, I also liked what you said about feeling guilty because yeah. it's like almost underneath, maybe underneath that lukewarm as you feel so guilty that well, you I, don't accept the truth. Well, it's not just ex not accepting the truth. It's not accepting God at his word where he— clearly states, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And what we have a problem with is believing that God could even forgive yes. us for whatever right. it is that we've done. And, I, and Satan's going to explo exploit that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And that's spiritual warfare. Oh, you're right. God could never forgive you for that. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's that thought that comes in and, you know, remind us, we'll have to talk about capturing thoughts mm -hmm. at some point. Um, but the the, you know, the church has been infiltrated recently with, and not just now, but more so it seems, but uh, can, can we be good people? Can we do good things and God still love us? Uh, even if we don't grow in our relationship with God. There were three questions I asked at the end of the service yesterday or the sermon yesterday. And uh, they were those types of things that the church is entertaining, right? Everyone mm -hmm. can get to heaven. It doesn't matter whether you know God or not. Um, but there were three questions I asked, and Lord knows I can't remember. <laughs> I was teaching Sunday school, so I wasn't there. So <laughs> I listened, and I can't <laughs> repeat them. So, oh, shoot. Okay. Um, but I think— one of the pieces when you look at the uh, Adam and Eve story is is the key to pulling Eve and ultimately Adam away was casting doubt. Mm -hmm. Did God really mm -hmm. say? Right. And that's what's happening in our culture today, but it's been happening all along, mm -hmm. just in different forms and different time frames and in, and in different ways, is that casting doubt and, and slowly drifting out of a relationship Um is great work of Satan. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think Satan probably, um, you know, wouldn't show up today in a, in a red suit with a pitchfork. He might be in a business suit and, you know, uh, whatever. I mean, he would look like us. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, he's the master of deception, and he's going to deceive us. That's right. That's and it's right. the hardest to recognize it when you're in the midst of that. Absolutely. So that's what I, I want to kind of explore more. And as you, and as you yeah. opened it, you talked about the dips and the valleys and the hard times mm -hmm. of life. And those are prime times for Satan to be at work because we're wondering, we're questioning, where is God? What, how did this happen? What did I do? Mm -hmm. All those questions that are coming if you're going through a really challenging time or whatever's going on. And um, sometimes it's because of that, it's harder to see God moving or to sense God's presence. And Satan is very deftly moving and working behind the scenes to make us question more and um, to make us more miserable ultimately and pull us away. Mm -hmm. And we don't even realize it. 
you know, I was thinking back, um, you know, I didn't even realize it. I was thinking back to this point in my, oh, I would say after I had really started seeking Jesus, um, again, the, the whole concept of spiritual warfare was so odd to me, you know, mm. can, really? I'm, someone's trying to keep me from God or someone's trying to uh, change my perspective on who God is. Uh, you know, God's a great father. He's just going to open the door to heaven one day. I believe enough. I don't need to go to church. I don't need to read the Bible. I don't need to pray. Uh, because God loves me, I'm going to end up in heaven. So, mm-hmm. And to think that there is someone in opposition, someone who is seeking to uh, either keep me from heaven or to minimally make me so ineffective for Christ on earth that I'm really nothing Mm -hmm. as far as uh, living the Christian life. And that struggle to to believe that there was this spiritual warfare going on as opposed to, you know, physical warfare. You know, right now we've got the conflict over in Ukraine. Putin has attacked or Russia, I would say more Putin has attacked um, out of uh, a desire to reformat Mm -hmm. the USSR as opposed to just you know, allowing the countries that disembarked from the USSR back in the 80s and 90s, just leave them alone and just work on your own country. You know, he wants to reformat something and to think in terms of that being spiritual warfare, uh, that he's got ungodly desires to do something to hurt others in order to gain more power, to gain more whatever that is might be to be known as the one who put Russia, Russia back, back together. together. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this whole idea uh, for some of us listening, even right now is that there is any kind of evil presence in the world that would seek to create enough chaos in anyone's life to remove God as a centerpiece or God as anything important that we should pursue or seek uh, can be hard to understand. Yeah. Well, and, and I think some people have an easier time believing there might be evil in the world. I mean, think about Star Wars and think about some of the big movies mm-hmm. that have a good versus evil approach and, and people buy into that pretty easily. But to think that evil is personified well, in I, a person or, or a being um, like Satan and his angels mm-hmm. or his demons um is harder for some people to buy. It is. I agree. I had a hard time with that concept until yeah. I learned more about it. Um, but yeah, that that concept doesn't, I don't know, doesn't seem... Well, if God's a personal God, right. why wouldn't Satan be why personal Satan... one-on-one coming after us? Mm-hmm. So that I think is, I think that's the key. We We all believe that there's good and evil in the world. And we could even say, we could intellectualize that evil is really just an outward perspective of a mental illness. Right. And so it's not really, really evil. It's just mental illness or something like that. We can explain it away in human terms. We can. Mm-hmm. And I think the Enlightenment was a part of the movement away from spiritual. Mm-hmm. I don't think that was a problem for people up until the Enlightenment. Yeah. And then to um, understand, I think, I just love how you said that. If we have a personal God, why can't we believe in um, an evil presence seeking to uh, destroy that relationship with God? And I think what pushed me past my concern was just reading the Gospels mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, to begin to see uh, that um, Jesus was casting out demons that Jesus was speaking against the work of Satan in our lives, uh, that the Holy Spirit's role was to help us to become more holy. Well, what's keeping us from becoming holy? You know, what is is that um, presence that seeks to keep us Mm -hmm. from evil or keep keep us from God? And so to name it, uh, all we have to do is look in the gospels to see what Jesus was 
uh, living in, um, casting out, uh, healing, uh, just amazing. And yet I think the intellectualization of the Bible says, you know, that just happened back then. Really, yeah. it was epilepsy or it was mental illness or something of that nature, and that Jesus was just correcting an imbalance in chemicals in the head. And yet, uh, we there's just way too many uh, examples of Jesus healing or casting out demons. Right. And I think what maybe made it more popular of all things was The Exorcist, the movie yeah, The Exorcist yeah. again. And I think that intrigued people uh, mm -hmm. who watched that movie. You know, I've never seen the movie yet, I, but the idea of being um, possessed. Possessed, yeah. Uh, I think uh, in seminary, one of my professors said, it's not really that you're possessed. You, he called it demonization or demonized. In other words, a demon has access to you mm -hmm. in, a, in a certain area of your life or a certain area of your thinking, uh, that type of thing. One of the things in movies especially that lifted up the reality of, of Satan was the passion of the Christ. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the, the Satan character, one was a woman, interestingly enough. Not that that's, I'm not trying to say that that's an issue, but I thought it was creative. Mm -hmm. But she was always, Satan was always kind of lurking in the background right. in the movie and watching and and almost conniving and planning. Um, and I, I just thought it was an interesting take on evil mm -hmm. and an evil presence. Um, and, and I thought that made it easier for me and for others to accept mm -hmm. and to realize how Satan might work, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah, because sometimes... You don't feel the presence of evil, but I think, well, every one of us, maybe, I, I mean, I know I have, have actually felt the presence of evil. And when you feel that, there's, it's undescribable. Um, yeah, I told a story in the break. Um, yeah, it, one of my that. mission trip stories, um, we were in a village in the Amazon working and um, we just felt a great resistance. Even the medical part of the team um, was feeling a lot of resistance to the work they were trying to do. And people were, were resist. Some didn't want to come to see the doctors and, and all of that. It was a very strange day. Mm -hmm. And um, we just felt there was a, a darkness. We called it the dark village, ultimately. And in the middle of the day, we just stopped everything. And we got everybody together and we prayed together mm -hmm. to the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit would break through that darkness and break through what we felt was an evil presence, someone trying to stop the work of the Holy Spirit and God. Um, and that was probably one of the most real experiences I've had where I felt evil very, very close. Mm -hmm. And that um, Satan was working very intentionally to stop what we were doing. Mm -hmm. um, and you know it at the moment. Yeah, I mean— Like you just know it, and you can't describe yeah. it, but— And we were all um, feeling the same thing. You know, why is there all these barriers? Why is nothing working today? And all mm -hmm. of a sudden it began to dawn on us— that Satan was working against us, and there but was this presence. Was that very unlike all the other days? I mean, there was I an mean, occasional time where we felt that more, but that was just so evident in this village. Yeah, more mm -hmm. so than others. Um, and I still don't, to this day, don't know why, except I believe it was Satan, mm -hmm. um, and why that village. What happened after you all gathered and prayed? There was some breakthroughs. There was a mm -hmm. lot more openness, but there was still some resistance among some of the people who would not come. Mm -hmm. And that was unusual. Mm -hmm. um, but we saw more people coming and more receptin rec receptance of the gospel mm -hmm. um, after we prayed because there was none before that. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think uh, we'll <clears throat> end our podcast on that moment. And then our next podcast, um, we're, we'll talk about how do we combat the spiritual warfare and we'll get into uh i think we wanted to start with the uh, uh ephesians um armor of god so we'll pick up back then so thanks everyone for listening uh if you'd like to join us in person at the first united methodist church of gaylord we have a traditional 9 a.m service on sunday and we also have a contemporary service um 
at 10.45 a.m. on Sunday. If you can't make it in person, we have a Facebook Live and uh, YouTube programs that you can watch the service on. Uh, you feel free to call the church at 989-732-5380 or visit our website, which will answer most of your questions. We'd love to see you in person. And uh, thanks again, everyone. <music>